My name is Juha Torvinen. I'm a music scholar and university lecturer in the musicology discipline of the University of Helsinki. As a scholar, my areas of expertise include the history of Finnish music, philosophy of music and music analysis. In addition, I've been interested in studying the many forms of relationship between music and nature. Nature is among the most common topics addressed in music. Music and sounds have been embodied humankind's environmental relationship regardless of the era or culture. The ancient doctrine of the harmony of spheres depicted music as a sounding model of the whole universe. Among many indigenous peoples, nature sounds are given specific world-defining meanings. Nature functions as a metaphor for personal mental states in romantic leads as well as in Finnish tangos. Birdsong imitations are commonplace means in every musical style and soundscape compositions use nature sounds as their artistic material. Environmental problems are among the most severe challenges of modern times. Climate change, the spread of microplastics in oceans or the loss of biodiversity directly or indirectly affect everything and everyone on the planet. In this context, the main motivating questions for me as a musicologist are the following. Does music have any ecological significance? Can music structure and redefine our nature relationship in an age of environmental crisis? Do music, musical practices and music research have any bearing on how people see nature and their place in it? In my opinion, the answer to all of these questions is yes. The relationship between music and nature is today as powerful as it has ever been, even more so. Music can inform us about the seriousness of ecological problems in specific ways, about which I'll discuss in the following. Let us first take an example. Because of its forceful sonic character and lyrics dealing with matters such as demise, destruction and loss, death metal is a form of music that goes well with the alarming prospects associated with environmental concerns. Hyper Object Beneath the Waves is a song by Finnish death metal band Abhorrence. As soon as the fierce rhythm at the beginning of the song is interrupted by the singer's unaccompanied sighs, the listener may realize how being out of breath could become concrete reality if environmental worst-case scenarios are realized. At the same time, the listener is reminded of how all living things, animals, fungi and plants, need to breathe to live, and that most of them will no longer be able to do so if sea levels rise or air becomes too polluted. Verbal and conceptual elements such as lyrics, song titles, literal descriptions of the origins of a composition and so on, always guide the interpretation of and the listening to music. The song Mercy Mercy Me, The Ecology, by the American singer and songwriter Marvin Gaye, is an early example of songs directing our attention to the troublesome state of the environment and humans' role in its degradation. Like the abhorrence example shows, besides linguistic elements, music connects us to nature also emotionally. It is important to realize how the intensity and power of musical experiences can resemble strong experiences of nature. During the era of Romanticism, for example, the sublime and the unspeakable were sought as much in music as in nature. The swan theme in Sibelius' Fifth Symphony or moving sound masses in Brian Eno's ambient music can create a feeling of belonging to a greater whole where every single part is connected to everything else. In addition to language and emotions, music environmental significance is manifested also in connection to memories and sense of belonging. Countless works of music have a certain place as subject matter. Site-specific music touches the listener because of the emotional connection to a place, not because of the very place the piece of music is about. Let's take three works of music. First, Nils Aslak Valkeapas radiophonic work based on natural sounds and joik goase dusse, bird symphony in English from 1994, 
Second, Italian composer Ottorino Respichi's symphonic poem Pini di Roma, Pines of Rome from 1924. And third, the Baltic Sea Conservation Polka by Fiddler Mauno Järvelä and Napparit, the Children's Folk Music Orchestra from 2014. These are about three completely different natural environments and may not markedly resemble each other musically. Still, these music examples have in common the way they exemplify a strong connection to the environment. The many ways music can connect us to nature through language, emotions, sense of places and history are present in Earth Springs Daughter, which is a song cycle for mezzo-soprano and chamber orchestra composed by Outi Tarkianen from 2015. The work explores climate change and the changing relationship between humans and nature through traditional Sami knowledge, mythology and poetry in the Northern Sami language. It includes poems by Nils Aslak Valkeapä and Rauni Makka Lukkari, among others. In Tarkianen's song cycle, poetry about and the mythology of the ancient relationship of the Sami with nature speak not only of imaginary and unreachable realities, but also and above all our current changing relationship with the nature. The main academic milieu for a music researcher interested in environmental issues is the field of music studies called ecomusicology. Ecomusicology has been given many definitions during recent years. For example, by music scholars Aaron S. Allen, Zefter Titan and Susanna Välimäki. Here I'd like to define the field as the study of textual and practical matters related to myriad connections between music, sound, culture and nature in the age of environmental crisis. In other words, ecomusicology studies compositions, lyrics and written text in and about music, as well as musical practices with environmental impacts, such as instrument building, the organization of concerts and the travels of musicians. Ecomusicology points out the grievances involved in making, experiencing, consuming and listening to music and strives to promote ecologically responsible and sustainable musical practices. Music may be one of the best means for exposing the multifarious forms of human nature relationship because it can effectively connect conceptual, linguistic, emotional, sociocultural, site-specific and memory-related aspects of our experience. Music may illustrate the significance of interconnectedness and diversity in its very essence. Moreover, all things and people in the perceptive space created by the sounds of music and affected by them connect to each other in a specific way because they take part in the concordant vibration these sounds create. Chef the Titan has called such community a sound community, in which music and its resonances are perceived as connecting rather than separating forces. This is nature in a broadest sense. Everything is connected to everything else in the ecological whole of the world. Music can be understood as a form of ecological harmony and a depiction of a biological diversity at the same time. This is also why we can listen to older nature-related music with eco-critical ears. This is also why music understood as eco-critical does not even need to have an explicit connection to nature. It is even enough for someone to make the connection, to associate music with nature. This is what eco-musicology does raises awareness about environment and its problems through musical practices.